how did this happen? <laughs> do you know how do you when you were very young did you think about public performance and acting or singing or you know what, what did you think about when you were growing up? And you're still kind of grown up, but you seem so grown up. <laughs> well, I guess I've just loved singing and just I've always wanted to be an actor since I was very, very, very young. And I know that I'm still very, very, very young, but <laughs> when I was younger. <laughs> um, but uh, I just, I didn't really think about public performances or anything. I, I just felt like I wanted to do singing and acting for fun. But then I realized that it would be even better if I made it serious and I started doing public performances, and then I was in um, After Yang, and then after that I've been doing some Disney Channel shows, and I was also on iCarly. So yeah, I guess that's how it was. <laughs> Have you been training and singing and acting a long time, or was just something that came very naturally? I mean, both perhaps, but yeah, I, I guess I would say both. Yeah. So you, you you were studying, like you, you had your intention to be a singer and an actor from a young age and yeah. you said, this is what I'm going to do. What was the casting process like for After Yang? Well, so at first, well, Koganada, the director, he told me that he at first saw a video of me singing the national anthem at an LA Galaxy game. And then he said that I looked like I would be a good Mika. And then, so, he requested me to do an audition, so I realized that the movie is based off of a short story called Sing Goodbye to Yang. So I read that so I could be able to connect with my character and know what personality to portray. And I really loved the story, and Koganada made the script very beautiful and very detailed. And so I, I took a self tape, and then, so I had the audition, and he came and met me and my family, and we talked about the movie, and we just talked a lot in general. And then, yeah, a few months later, he, he gave us a call and said that I got the job. And I guess it was just a, a dream come true. What drew you to the material initially, to the short story when you read it? I guess because, well, I'm Asian and they also put a lot of Chinese culture into the story. And like Mika is always thinking if she is part of the family or not. And um, Yang taught her about grafting. And um, he said that it's important to feel like you're part of the family you are now, but you have to remember where you were originally from. And in this case, Mika is from China. And Yang has always dedicated his life into teaching Mika about Asian culture. And he's always thought, how can he be Asian? Because he's a robot. He, he's never been to Asia or China or anything. And I guess he wants to know what it's like to be Asian and teach Mika. And I guess since I'm Asian, I really can relate to that. And I, I get that and I understand it. And that's what I, I was drawn to, yeah. It's such a beautiful performance. And it is interesting to see this very mixed family. I don't think I'm giving too much away. White father, black mother, Chinese uh, daughter, <coughs> and older brother who's also Asian. <laughs> And I am reminded by our lovely 80 person, Justin, that I forgot to show the clip. So let's see the clip now. Maybe that's all we have. We were, we were uh, clamoring to get clips from all our filmmakers and they didn't all come in time, so. You will have to see that film very, very <laughs> it's a It's a really lovely contemplative film that talks about a lot of issues, which I know I've been thinking about, like AI. What 
is our future going to be with so much AI and can and I, AI can a robot have love? How creative can a robot be? You know, there's so many issues that come with this, and these are not things for down the road. They're happening today, right? So, did you like being on a movie set and getting up really early in the morning and working really long hours? No. And did they feed you well? <laughs> That's always the first thing that producers think about. What was that like for you? Well, yeah, I loved being on the movie set. And I normally wake up really early, so I guess that was pretty fun for me. And um, yeah, I think it was really fun to be on set. And I got to work with so many amazing people, like Kobanada, Jody Turner Smith, Justin Min, Haley Lou Richardson, and Colin Farrell. And it was just an amazing experience overall because it was my first film, obviously, and I, I thought it was just a really cool experience and I really like being on set, so yeah. And did you feel like your, what, 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 what do you think is a good takeaway from the film? Like how, how, you know, you read the story, you had some ideas, but after shooting the whole film, was there some takeaway from you and and what the film is trying to impart to the audience in general? Well, I think it's trying to talk about acceptance, actually, because this family is very, very different. And, like, I think that it's all about acceptance as well because they accept their differences and they, they find out that they're truly a family. And, like I said, Mika has been questioning whether or not she's part of the family. And Yang teaches her about grafting, and she finally realizes that she is part of the family. And even though they're all different, even though Yang is not even human, he's a robot, well, the family sees that after he dies, they realize how big a part he was in the family. He wasn't just a robot, but he was a family member. That's so beautiful. You're incredibly articulate. <laughs> More so than many adults I know. And now, do you mind putting on your singing hat and uh, performing a piece for us yeah, to sure. end the evening? Thank you. Cool.